For the next 30 minutes or so, we'll be talking about designing government integrated services, about public government relationship design, and of course about customer happiness projects. Hi, I'm Mona Aldaba, and this is the Service Design Show. Hi, I'm Mark Fontijn. Welcome to your two weekly burst of inspiration where you get to learn what some of the world's best service designers are currently doing. We talk about the current state of the industry, exciting new developments and the challenges that are up ahead. With the Service Design Show, we help you to become a better service designer so you can make a bigger impact on the world around us. We bring you a new episode every two weeks on Thursday so if you haven't done that already and you don't want to miss anything, be sure to click that subscribe button. My guest in this episode is Muna Aldaba. Muna has been named the best employee of the year within the government of Dubai in 2004. She's currently the director of service development within the Ministry of Cabinet Affairs and the Future. And her focus are customer happiness projects. Really happy to have Muna as the first guest from the Middle East on the show. Welcome to the show, Muna. Hi, Mark. How are you? I, I'm, I'm great and I'm so happy to, uh, to have you here and to, to be the first guest from the Middle East. I'm so curious what's happening over there. <laughs> uh, it's my pleasure really to have, you, uh, to have uh, me in the show and it's really a great opportunity for us in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates, to share our experience with you and, and share it with the world. Muna, we met in Amsterdam at the Service Design Global Conference 2016 and your talk was amazing. But I'm so curious, uh, where did you learn about the term service design? When did you get in touch with the term? Well, actually, we started this in um, 2015, where we have engaged with a lot of innovation projects. This year was uh, named as for the whole government and the whole country as the innovation year. And uh, we have been engaged with the uh, Mohammed Bar Rashid Establishment for Innovation, which is a, a center that has established for, uh, you know, uh, developing, uh, enabling and uh, teaching people about innovation. And one of our, our engagement partnership with them is about how we can innovatively develop services and improve them. And then they got us uh, engaged with one of the company, FutureGov, was really in service design. And here, here, how we got exposed to that uh, terminology and we engaged in the project which is called Service Factory. So, so you're quite new to the term service design, right? From two years, right? Yes, I mean, as, as, as a service to design, as a branding it this way, yes. However, our government was engaged in a lot of a service improvement or development. There was a lot of service re-engineering or enhancing mm. services projects or having, you know, standards of delivering services and training about having a service expert. Yeah. But in the, the new ways of service design, that was a new kind of elevating the way we were doing things in government, improving services to the next stage. I think there are so many service designers of pe or people that, were, that got into service design saying, well, I've been doing this for years and I didn't know it, it, it was called service design. So I can imagine that that's also what's happened uh, in your place, right? Sure, sure. Uh, but Muna, it's uh, yeah. to move on. Yeah. I'm, I said me, it was for us to move on. Yeah. You, you sent me three awesome topics that uh, we'll uh, talk about and I sent you a few question starters. So we'll co-create the questions for this episode. Uh, are you ready? Ready? Go let ahead. Me, let me pick the first topic that... Uh, right. The three topics. All right. This, uh, this will be a lot about government. So let's start with a topic that also has the name government in it. And it's called Government Integrated Service. Do you have a question starter that goes along with this one? Sure. Uh, let's start with the first one. Well, what if? So what if government uh, have really engaged customers and uh, suppliers in each stage in, in improving services? Uh, for us, this has been a key question because the way that usually government do is thinking that they are the experts in everything, that they would, would 
presumably think that this is what the customers want, here the new system, here the new law, and this is what's going to make them happy. And then when they measure the customer satisfaction, they wonder why the customers are not happy with it, everything. So uh, having that kind of engagement is a, a wide opening because especially when we looked into a complex uh, service such as integrated service, it's not easy to improve a service silo. However, uh, engaging citizens have made our life easier as government because we found sometimes it's a very simple solution that the customers need and designing that around what they need have really uh, helped us achieve quick wins and success. Of so what can, can you give an example of such a service? What do you mean with an integrated service? Uh, for example, uh, let's say uh, um, we have one of the service factory, which is one of the key projects we developed in the United Arab Emirates about developing uh, integrated service around the life event of uh, our uh, citizens, say from uh, birth till uh, you know your retirement. So if we take the first bundle of uh, having a new baby, for example, uh, when you uh, have a newborn bo baby, you need a birth certificate, you need a new passport, you need a social security number, you need uh, the uh, passport book, etc. And a lot of services that engage. Why should the citizens go several times to all entities, reapply all these paperwork, and uh, you know waste a lot of a precious moment because uh, with he should be with uh, his wife and his uh, kid. So we thought as let's go again into those uh, those integrated services, how we can have this bundle of services delivered to the doorstep uh, of those citizens. And, and we, thought, we thought about it, it's not a process only problem, it's an emotional engagement. How we can celebrate uh, as a government with our uh, citizens, how we can save that precious moment they cannot uh, return rather than you know, having that with the government. And then where we start in government. So, uh, in those, so what we did is that in those service centers, um, we had, our, uh, let's say, in the hospital itself, we engaged in the private sector, we had the pilot, is that we have one unified form with all the requirements. You just apply once in the hospital. You don't need to go to any service centers and all the paperwork would be done. It would be sent through, you know, FedEx or any mm. kind of uh, mm. mail to your own doorstep. Well, not only that, but it's packaged as it is um, a gift from the government to the, uh, to the citizen celebrating the newborn baby. That's quite quite radical, right? That's a quite quite radical different approach. How how, how do yes. I guess I, I guess the the uh, customers or the the uh, citizens must really like this. But how do how how do people within the government respond to this? Well, it it was not an easy journey because any of new project uh, we develop at the prime minister office and we try to launch those new thoughts, a new way of doing, it's, it's a cultural change program, we believe. And there should be resistance because you're telling people to stop the way they're doing things and come and adopt a new way that they should trust. And this is why when we designed the service factory, it was not only focusing and running into development. We, we have put in place that we picked leaders and champions within organization. We have educated them and trained them through this workshop. And then we engaged them through the day-to-day -day implementation of this project. So okay. we taught, we gave them the tool and we engaged in those discussions through those uh, meetings and until we convinced them and, and now we're very happy that they are uh, talking about what the customers want, how we can really design services. So this is the, the thing that helped us achieve that. And, so and you, had, you really had to involve them in the process, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. From day one is that we engage them in this first day of the workshop and, and even the designing of the workshop, we did not tell them, you know, this is a, an expert in service design, this is how we should do it, sit and apply. No, we tell them, get out of the training room, go to the service center, ask the people. And they were surprised. I mean, they said, really, should we go now? And, and for us, as a management, even, we were hesitant. I mean, we did not know if they're going to come back again to the training session. <laughs> However, because it was a different way of doing things, of uh, approaching customer, understanding how people feel and what really matters to them, it made a difference. Or on the contrary, it made them very excited to come back and share their stories with the citizens they met and, and it excites them to roll the ball in terms of service design improving services. Mm. So help me 
um, to understand does this is, is this something that is uh, uh, a natural fit with the culture or is, is there also a cultural barrier in this um, I think it's it's both let's say uh, something that have helped us accelerate that process is the, the culture of the UAE is always trying to excel in whatever projects they are doing. They're not only competing as organization, but they are also competing as a whole nation with, uh, with the world. How we can be number one and uh, and this has been have you know the uh, two side effects. One is that it was very good. It's, uh, they were very eager to do great projects. But then when we introduced the, uh, sir, um, the, the minimum viable service, they said, why should we go so little where we can go so big about projects? And I said, no, you know, we are the country who have, you know, built the tallest building in the world. And now you're telling us we need to do a small uh, a step of the service. And this was like very demotivating to them. But when they got to the stage of engaging even that small minimum viable service, the amount of work, the processing, the amount of training and awareness that goes around, even the small prototype, they understood how it is. Because some of them wanted to integrate all the services in all the government and all the and say, calm down, we're very happy that you're excited and competing. However, let me be realistic for you to have this project and, and, and understand the service design about uh, iterating and not having this big picture. Even in the first phases of understanding and doing the implementation of those projects, you're taking those feedback and again uh, changing and shaping that service to meet the customer needs. Super interesting. Super interesting because, you know, the, I've, I've had people from uh, Latin America, from Asia, now from, uh, uh, from the Middle East, and it's so interesting which parts of the design process fit in which 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 done. So I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. Muna, let's move on to a second topic. And the second topic, oh, yeah. It is uh, about public government relationship design. So is there a question starter you have that uh, uh, goes well with well, this one. I will say why. Why do we need to study public government relationship design? And what do you uh, mean with, with, with relationship design? Yes, uh, this is part of my uh, research, personal research. I'm continuing my PhD as the, at Virginia Tech University. And I was always interested in the, that services are very intangible and and when you're dealing with uh, another segment let's say uh, especially in the government you you find that some indicators show that citizens are not happy whatever you do and when you look to, to the nature of the service let's say legislative people will not be happy about uh, if i give you a ticket fine or i'm you know if you were a criminal they will not mm. be happy and and here is the importance of designing that relationship we're having as a government you know putting fines on some people because they are breaking the laws because they are not our target segment the relationship we're building or the social contract we have is with the public and this is why we're important and here comes the differentiation yes we have adopted a lot of the private sector uh, customer relationship management but however we need to understand as a government how we are different than the private sector. We don't need to deal with our public and services as a lump sum approach. Each service is different. So when we are giving legislative services different, when we are dealing with, you know, uh, consumer protection services, you are doing the role of an arbitrator. The relationship is different because you're trying to solve a problem between an individual and a company. So here you're not providing the service, you're more of a, of a judge. Trying. So the relationship here is different and, and this is very important when designing how to serve and who is the most important and what factors affect that relationship. In service design, I think it's a lot about emotional aspects, especially that I'm, um, I'm responsible for conducting uh, customer happiness surveys and public satisfaction. And I always had those entities and saying, how can you compare us? to, uh, you know, the uh, the transportation authority. They are just, you know, they are tickets and selling transportation while we have a kind of legislative, we have some criminals on board. How you can compare us? It's a different relationship. It's a different kind of a management tool that you develop. And I think the next step is 
service design should look into designing that relationship. What is in it? What is in exchange? Uh, there is something that can be, uh, for example, social exchange. Uh, we as a government, we're not like private, where there is very clear economical exchange. We provide services for the community, for the benefit of the whole, for the safety, for having a better social status for our citizens. The exchange there should be very clear and, and, and this is, will be helping everyone to deliver their job and managing it better. So, so is, it, is, it, is the challenge will, with designing these relationships uh, that uh, within a business you maybe have a one-to-one -one relationship and within a government you have a government versus a bigger public, so bigger entities, is that, is that a big difference? It is, it is, because it's a complex relationship. For example, uh, let me give you the, the doctor-patient relationship, a government like Ministry of Health. Uh, it's tried to have, uh, uh, for example, uh, prevention, so it's uh, serving the public. It has a legislative role because it's responsible to make sure that the doctors are right uh, providing services. Yet the doctor itself have a relationship with the patient. He should be clear with him. So in, in a situation, for example, if the government, for economical reasons, is trying to choose one type of uh, medicine, so it has a good a supplier relationship because of the funding of it, yet the doctor sees that this is not the right uh, medicine for that uh, patient. He has this kind of a, a relationship to be truthful to the patient, say, yes, the government providing the service, but I would rather you go to a private, uh, you know, institution yeah. and a hospital to get that better service. So see the conflict of the relationship. Yeah. So you need yeah. to streamline, you need to engage the doctors in choosing the medicine and suppliers. We need to get the patients and what, you know, so that kind of engagement within all parties or let's say stakeholders in that relationship make the difference in the delivery of the service. And also, I guess, in the uh, perception of value of the service, right? Definitely, hmm. definitely, absolutely. Muna, you already um, touched upon that you're doing customer happiness surveys, right? And that's, that's yeah. already uh, touching upon uh, the, the, yeah, we're moving fast, but this is already touching upon the third thing. And I think this is the topic that is uh, mostly dear to your heart. Customer yeah. happiness projects. This is this hasn't been on the show yet, as far as I can remember. So, do you have a question starter that goes along with this one? Um, Customer yeah. happiness projects. Let's say uh, one of the question is how far? How far is the United Arab Emirates going with the customer happiness project? Um, as part of my role as a service development uh, and the restructuring of government, last year we had the first minister of happiness in the world and gladly she's a female uh, and that is uh, an added value also because uh, I believe a lot of females have a, a real role in, in understanding the, the citizen and the emotional aspect, especially that happiness is not a hard kind of a topic that can be tangible and can be captured, is a lot about a concept about cognitive uh, reasons and how we can evaluate things and how we can really say if we are happy or not and mm. it is a very exciting thing for the UAE government yet it is still a challenging thing but we are very excited to start this project so one of the things that we as my role is to conduct a customer happiness survey so when we said how can we measure happiness, especially in the government scope? So we have a, a, a large uh, kind of a customer happiness index, which is in the competitive, but it takes into very generic uh, aspects such as security, way of life, etc. But for me, is I'm narrowing it down to the government delivery. We have uh, uh, looked at it from a different perspective. We have classified into three things. One is is something related to the delivery of the core service. So. Still, we're going to me me measure the satisfaction, which was the first question. What is different between satisfaction and customer happiness when designing mm. the service? Mm. So we thought that we that definition by itself have a debate within our organization and even the other agencies. So we said, okay, satisfaction is really looking into the core delivery of services. Let's say the service quality, for example, the time of getting the service, the quality without having any mistakes in the service, the behavior of the employee, all that that should be there, 
by the standard of service. So these are. Now, when we talk about the happiness, because it's very perceptional and very emotional to the, uh, the uh, customer, we looked into two aspects, which is what are the values that the customer have and behold, which help him evaluate those service. And uh, another thing is what make him happy. So uh, we d uh, deep dived, it's, it's, we changed from a qualitative, quantitative surveys, yeah. just are you happy or not, into more bottom-up approaches. What are the drivers of your happiness? So we have very qualitative one-to-one -one interviews with key segments, and we looked into what makes you happy and how, what drives you. So we identify uh, the beginning around 100 drivers, and then we narrowed them down. And we have developed a certain matrix that can bundle them in a certain uh, way, and then we group the services around them. This is our new in initiatives, and now we are uh, in the end of this, and hopefully we will share that uh, results with the community and also internally uh, in the government. So, so your question uh, was how far? I guess yeah. uh, you're sort of at the starting point. Where do you see these customer happiness projects being in five years, for instance, what, what do you hope to have achieved? Uh, well, we want to have achieved kind of, uh, again, a collaboration between the government and the citizens, because happiness is not only the role of the government, even if we promise that would be a fake promise, because we cannot uh, uh, make you happy without you. Happiness is an individual a personal perspective you want to be happy you can be if not even if I put all my efforts all the resources in the government for that you can so again it's emphasized the role of integration or co-creation service design co-creation is a key thing and we believe in in the community role in that a lot of studies of happiness which have conducted one of the studies have been monitoring a group of people for 70 years and the people who remained at that the end of the study which was a very long were the people who were really engaged, engaged in relationship with the community. So uh, the community is really supporting individuals. And as a government, we should enable and help that or uh, play the role of a, of a platform. The government is enabling and platform and connecting the people and making that happy. Uh, we were, we're still exploring uh, those areas, but with uh, always designing their happiness and engaging them, I think we can do it. Uh, we have several projects currently running, which is having we set standards for government to provide happiness. We have launched a, a formula called happiness formula that talks the same values that I took, is that it's not only the employee who should be proud in delivering services and taking the extra mile, it's not only the role of the entity to provide the facilities and the resources to deliver this, but it's also the responsibility of the citizens of being engaged and cooperative. And it's a lot about positivity. The government is looking into the next coming five years is to change the culture, to have a more a positive vibe, uh, more into engagement, more into looking to the bright side and having that community. If the community collaboratively work that, we'll be able to reach such uh, so, an amazing... So what effort. you're saying is that there's a lot of talk within the design community about organizational change, but you're talking about cultural change on a uh, country size scale, right? Making people more positive, more collaborative, more open. That's 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 yeah. the aim of the of the current. Yes. That's that's amazing. So uh, Muna, what is the thing that makes you the most happy? What is the thing that you're the most proud of if you think back on these customer happiness projects? What makes me happy is I'm um, um, creating new things, a new way of life, a new future for my kids, and new things because what excites me as a development has always come with a better thing, with improving not only products and services that are tangible, not only increasing the funding, but it's impacting the people's life, it's making them happier, uh, it's making my kids' future a better future, my mother, my citizens, other friends, the whole community. That's making me really proud and I have an impact in the world by doing that, even on a small scale, uh, as certain services, but the compound and ripple effect it have in the community and changing that culture is amazing. I, I, I think Louis Alt told in his episode that we as service designers get the opportunity to, to design a better world and that, that we should be really lucky with that. And that's basically what you're saying too, right? Sure.
Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, Muna, the, the, your, this is your opportunity to ask the people that are watching or listening to this episode a question. So what is it that you would like to ask them? Is there a question on your mind? Uh, if you had the chance to improve someone's life and make them happy, how would you use service design into doing that? It, it, don't think about it as a work. How in, you can change people's life through service design? De designing for happiness. That, that's an awesome yes. thing. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Uh, this, this, uh, this was uh, amazing, Muna. Thanks for sharing. And uh, I hope we can uh, learn much, much more from what's happening in the uh, in Middle East and Dubai. Um, really looking forward to that. Thank you so much, Mark. It has been a pleasure. So what are your thoughts about the topics we've just discussed with Muna? What do you think is needed to design for happiness? Let us know down below in the comments. The Service Design Show is all about helping you to become a better service designer by sharing real life stories of people that are currently shaping the field. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to see more interviews, check out some of the past episodes. And if you haven't done it already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in two weeks time for a new episode. And for now, thanks for watching.